Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is King Coda and welcome to another video. In today's video, we'll be going over Inazuma and the ultimate guide to Inazuma. I'll be talking to you about different puzzles, uh, where to get the craftable weapons, as well as the general info about the entire new region that we have currently out. Now, as of 2.1, there'll be two new islands released. I will do a follow-up video going over anything in particular about those, but let's go over the area as it is right now. So I'll be giving you guys this guide video as though you just started playing in the Inazuma area. So one important thing to note is that this here, Statue of the Seven, can be accessed as soon as you enter into Inazuma. Uh, you just have to go over to where it is. It is up here along the stairway and behind all these guards. Now these guards will stop you at a point in the story. Um, if you don't come here right away, but if you come here right off the cusp, uh, no one will stop you from going all the way into their backyard and picking up the electro abilities for the traveler. As soon as you get the ability to leave Rito, this will involve you doing a quick cast with a quick quest with Toya, uh, allowing you to get the rights to be able to leave, and you will make your way down towards the Konda village here. As soon as you get the rights to do that, I highly recommend you go around and unlock all of the teleport waypoints, as well as the wave rider waypoints, which will allow you to summon the boat in order to get you across and uh, travel these oceans. Uh, I also highly recommend that along the way you are marking important resource gathering. To me, the most important resource is the rocks that you need to grab in order to craft the weapons. Uh, but you could also mark the locations of some of the plants that are important, as well as other things as you find fit. There are a lot of free artifacts that you can just find in ch uh, boxes and whatnot that respawn daily. So marking those might be a very good idea. Now, as you come over to Konda Village, there is going to be a Shrine Maiden just outside of the village. She will be around this statue. Uh, you'll notice it with all the foxes that are around. I really like this statue. Speaking with this Shrine Maiden, we'll start a quest. She will give you a little fan or something like that. And uh, if you follow that quest, you will go and investigate within the village. <gasps> I already made a guide for how you can get the new craftable catalyst from doing this quest, so I won't go into too much detail, um, but following this quest right off the cusp can be a very beneficial way because it will pretty much have you travel all around the Narukami Island and have you collect uh, various different shrines and finally wind up over here near the Grand Narukami Shrine uh, to finish that off and get the Catalyst. It's a very good quest to pick up and I highly recommend you do it. While you are doing that quest, you may come across some stone slates. Up here in Jiren Island, there is a man who is trapped in a cage at the top of the island. He is in the cage right up there. Go on up there, free him from the cage. You'll have to grab a key out of the tree. Again, check out my other video for details on how to do that. After you free him, you will start a quest where you have to go around and collect some stone slates. After you get the stone slates, he will tell you there's a fifth stone slate to go and get. He's a liar. Uh, after you come back to confront him, you free him again from a, from a cage and you get access to the chest that gives you the sword catalyst. Very important quest to come and pick up early on. Once you get access to the greater area of the Narukumi Island, come on over to Amakane Island and get on this Wave Rider symbol. I mean, you could start from over here, but honestly, this is the closest one. Make sure you pick up the uh, talent materia domain that is there and make your way on over to the Kujo encampment. There is a quest you can start over here in the Kujo encampment. I believe the issuers of the quest are located nearby the, this waypoint. Um, it'll be a shrine maiden and a soldier. Speaking with them, we'll start a quest where you then make your way over to Tartarasumna 
You will investigate around a shield dome that is surrounding Tatarasuna. You won't be able to go through the center. You'll have to go around the outside area here. And standing nearby this fire will be a, a guy that you have to talk to. Speaking to him, he'll have you fire some cannons. Again, all this is detailed in my craftable weapons video. Uh, cannons on all three of these islands. You shoot at the shield. Shield goes down. You can go in here, get some keys, use the keys to get the great sword. Uh, over here where I have this mining thing located is an important thing to start doing day one if you want to get as much as you can out of Inazuma as quickly as you can once you make your way here. This little shack over here is a guy who will require you to bring him some special conches. Now these conches can be found in glittering things on the ground like right over there. Uh, see if I can get lucky and grab one real quick. I believe I only need one for a turn in. There it is. Alright, let me kill these guys real quick. Alright, so uh, you will have to pick up three different conches by finding them on the ground like you just saw me do. Uh, once you have three, you come over and talk to him, and you tell him that you want to open up a chest. And he'll have you give him three conches. And opening up a random chest will give you stuff like a potato and cabbage. It's not really all that amazing, but if you do this up to seven times a day, it doesn't matter what one you open, I believe is time-gated. Uh, I opened up the center one every day. And it took me six days to get the uh, blueprint for the bow. Now, the bow is one of the better craftable weapons that you can get right now, so I highly recommend grabbing that. Over here by the Fort Fuji, F Fujitu, Fujito uh, area is going to be the, I believe, the final of the craftable weapons. I'm pretty sure I have gone through them all now. Uh, it involves you doing a quest where you go around and you fix some shrines that are busted. This shrine here will be inoperable and you'll have to go and get some pieces to place into it to fix it. Uh, I go over the details of how to do that again in that video before, but basically you have to pop some water spheres around the area in order to do that. There are exactly three new bosses that have been added as of 2.0 for Inazuma. We have the Geo Hypostasis, otherwise known as the Perpetual Mechanical Array. Uh, we have the Pyro Hypostasis. And we have the Mangu Kenki, who was actually part of the ocean event that was the summer event. Uh, that just passed. All in all, his boss fight is pretty simple. He will spawn multiples of a different enemy that we'll be going over in a sec. The challenge is that they do a lot of AoE damage, so bringing somebody that can put up a shield is recommended or be adept at dodging. So for the pyro hypostasis is recommended to bring somebody that does hydro damage. Uh, Tartaglia has an excellent DPS here if you happen to have him. Uh, Shink Show does okay, not the best. But Mona and Barbara are kind of the go-tos. I'm gonna this. use Barbara because everyone is guaranteed to have a Barbara by the time you're here in Surely Inazuma. To convince anyone to... Let's dance. The general challenge for this fight is he's an annoying guy to fight and he does a decently high amount of damage and you cannot harm him until you destroy his shield. Um, and the most efficient way to destroy the shield is of course to use a Hydro DPS. When he does this, you want to swap back to your Barbara and just do one basic attack on each of those to destroy it. This will prevent him from getting his shield back. And one more Kazuha attack should do it. And he's down. 
I'm actually gonna grab this loot because I do need it for the chance I get Yoimiya before her banner goes away. And of course I don't get good luck for making a video. Thanks, Mahoyo. Maku Kinki is the next boss and the final one that was added in 2.0 for me to show off the fight for. Uh, he's over here by Serpent's Head uh, in the Yashiori Islands, the very last islands that you can get to. While not a boss, they did add a sort of training dummy for you here at the top of Tatarasuna Island. When you make your way up here, there will be a samurai figure for you to fight. Um, you will have to do a couple quests for him real quick. They don't take too long, just you running around. And afterwards, you can come and fight him at any point. How's it going, Masanori? And upon defeating him, he just returns to his static way. Uh, just gives you a few little lines of dialogue, and then he's reset to fight him all over again, if you want. Now, running around in Inazuma, you will find these electro bubble things, and you can't walk through them. Uh, unless you grab an Electrogranum from the nearby areas, which will allow you to pass through. You put the Electrogranum inside of the little rock there, and it disables the bubble for a short amount of time. So these relay stone variables work by chaining the electricity from the origin stone to a source, uh, all the way down to connect them to deactivated relay stones like this one right here. Um, I can't really show you how this one works because I've already completed it and it removes the relay stones that you can pick up in place when you complete it, apparently. Uh, but basically how it wants to work, these are electro sources here. So what I would need is to chain the electricity here off of a relay stone, place another relay stone, say here, and it would connect to this one to there. And then a relay stone here would connect to there. Sometimes you can become the relay stone by becoming electro charged, but it does not appear to be working since again, this one is completed. Time to go. Um, but there's usually an electro somewhere nearby for you to become a part of the relay. You will of course have your regular types of challenges to complete like time trials and the such. How some of the time trials work in this game is you will pick up an electrogram and a pathway will open up to you where you have to fly across multiple areas with the electrogram. Uh, using it to chain in between these different points in the sky. Uh, I will show you how that works alongside showing you a secondary puzzle here. It involves you hitting stones in order to make it to where all of the stones have the exact same face. Uh, this one is a particularly annoying one because not only do you have to do these two stones here, but there are several stones on the other side of the water. And you can see I'm just using the button prompt to chain myself in between these. See, there are two over here. Uh, when you get to this puzzle, which is located here, you want to hit the one on the leftmost facing out here. I will, I will show you. You want to hit this one and then hit the same one on the exact same size directly across from it. That is how you complete this dungeon, or this puzzle. It took me a long time to work that out. Let's go over some of the new enemies that are located in this game. Starting with the new types of treasure hunters. These are like Ronin Samurais. Uh, they are often paired with treasure hunters, but they are not. They are not treasure hunters because they, instead of dropping you the treasure hunter sigil, will drop the old handguard and the various tiers of that, which are used for the new Inazuma weapons. So, pretty good idea to farm them. They don't appear to drop their drops at, like, a very consistent rate. During your 
journey, you will come across a kid named Kid Kajurai. Uh, he is part of a game called Tamari. And I actually haven't done this one of him. He is in three different places on the map that you have to do at the same time. If you've ever played Super Mario Odyssey, uh, they added the ability to like, hide a balloon in the world and then you go and hunt other people's balloon. If you know that game mode, this is that game mode. Um, you get a timer put up and you have to find his balloon. Um, you have the distance from the target located above you. So it's this little glowing ball. Grab it within the time limit. You teleport back over to him. And when you do this three times, that third one took a little while. So when you complete it third time, three times, you'll have the little ball sitting next to him. You can play it again if you want. Uh, or you can place it yourself and have other people go and find it. Um, and then you can get a precious chest from him. That always gives you ten primos. So... And then the new enemy for you to fight in Inazuma is the Shneznaya Maiden, who I like to call Mommy. So she is actually a Hydro Elemental enemy. And she's very tanky. A lot of the reason why she takes so long to kill is she just keeps teleporting away. There, she's dead. Uh, so after you kill mommy, you get the new crystal prisms, which are useful for leveling up some weapons. So that right there was the tunuki. They're kind of mischievous little creatures that are located all about. They'll do a little dance, teleport to an area, and when you meet them at the end, you get a little reward. His reward was just an artifact. Cool. So up here, we're going to face another new enemy, as well as a new puzzle. First, I'm going to kill these enemies, and this right here is the Electro Samurai. This guy is very tanky. There's another version of him that is Pyro. Uh, you will quite often have to fight the two of them together, and when you do, defeating one causes the other one to heal. So, bear that in mind. You might need to time out your DPS so they are not healing themselves, but the, he will also drop for you the handguard, um, the same as the new treasure hoarder type people. So this here, this electro charged sword, is a new puzzle. So you can see whenever I touch the sword hilt, I get zapped by lightning, and it alerts nearby enemies apparently. So after you deal with the nearby enemies, what you instead need to do is pick up an Electrogram. When you have an Electrogram, you cannot be harmed by electricity. That includes touching the Sword Hill. Instead, it will spawn a Ghost Samurai, the ghost of, I guess, the, guy, the owner of the sword, would be my guess. And this is the Pyro version of the Samurai. His move set and everything is exactly the same. Just he looks a little bit different because he's not alive. When you defeat him, he will of course still drop the handguards, and will also drop a chest for you to loot. Over here by the Monku Kinky fight, we're actually gonna fly straight across over top of him, not fight him, but instead go to this area. And you can see there's a chest here for me. This chest does not naturally spawn here. Instead, what you need to do is talk with Washizu and get the rights to pray at the Outstrider Shrine. Uh, you need to pay your respects to it three times. Once you have done so three times, these orbs will appear and you are all set. When you come back the next day, a chest will reappear here. I do not believe this chest is infinite, but it does reset pretty commonly. If you ever see an enemy surrounded by this black mist with the green, like, specks coming out of it, that enemy is, like, influenced by dark karma. We learned about this during the Zhao story as a part of the Leeway Harbor uh, event. Uh, basically, he's just an extra tankier version of the enemy. 
The last of the new enemies I'm going to go over for this video are the Ruined Sentinels. Ruined Sentinels are the new weapon map farming enemies. There's not very many of them currently on the map once we get the other islands. They'll be uh, considerably better in that regard. But we'll just really quickly kill me and go over their drop. These enemies can be quite dangerous and tanky, especially if you're playing in co-op, so bear that in mind. And they drop their own type of core, the chaos uh, items. So make sure you hunt Time them down so you can level up new weapons. So the Grand Naruki tree is here in the Grand Naruki temple. And it is what we spend the sigils on in this area. You can't actually spend them at the shop like you could in the other two areas. They go to the tree instead. And the tree has a lot of levels to it. Um, I believe it goes all the way up to 50. However, they put a cap on it for currently in the game. The highest tier that you can achieve in the game as it stands right now is tier 20. You can see I have 74 sigils. It only takes 25 to level it up and I cannot level it up. Um, the rewards are extremely good here. Uh, you get multiple uh, craftable items. You get multiple wishes. You get multiple crowns, uh, talent materia. The shrine keys, so we can go and get some Prima Gems, Fragile Resin. Uh, these are very good, so make sure you constantly come and upgrade your tree. And I'm hoping the rewards continue to be good all the way throughout. We had a very similar system of a tree giving you boosts uh, during the Dragon Spine uh, section of the game. That tree also at the end rewarded you with the Cryo Wings. So hopefully you get some kind of nice cosmetic for finishing this. This will also upgrade your Electro Grana, the thing you pick up from the little thing that you use for a lot of the puzzles. Um, an important one to get is at level six, it will give you Barrier Breaker. Barrier Breaker helps you get through extra powerful versions of that shield that we looked at before. One of which exists directly behind this puzzle. It took me forever to realize I just had to level up the tree in order to get into here. But this is usually sealed off with uh, one of those purple shields. And it says you cannot pass here even whenever you use the Electrogranum. The Electrogranum you would use, by the way, is up there in order to get into here. Uh, but then you can eventually get in here and there is some pretty good rewards waiting for you once you do. Just like in the case of the tree, uh, the Statue of the Seven here will not let you level it all the way uh, to its max level. Right now, level six is the highest that you can get it. Uh, there are exactly 20 uh, Electroculus available to find so uh, for the level six to seven. So that means that you are missing two in order to level all the way up. I still need to go grab two more but I have yet to find them. But of course the rewards here are also good. This is where you get your constellations for the Electro Traveler. The Electro Traveler's constellations are very nice as well as you can get wishes and other good rewards. You will want to level up the region as quickly as possible so that way you can unlock the ability to do your commissions and bounties on a weekly basis. These reset every Monday and you basically, you have to get it to tier three, level three, before you can unlock the ability to do the bounties and the requests. Once you have the ability to do the bounties and the requests every week, you should make sure you do these every week so you level up your reputation. The reputation rewards are huge. The big things to get are, of course, you get cooking recipes, you get some uh like crafting recipes for your house, you get a nameplate, all that's great. But the big stuff is things like this fan. The red feather fan will increase your gliding movement speed by 30% for 30 seconds. This could be huge in some of the events coming out in the future. Definitely make sure you pick this up. 
you will also get the Electroculus Resonance Stone. This will eventually help you be able to find all the Electroculus without having to go to a map uh, in order to find them. Uh, these is very nice, and the only way you can get it is by leveling this up to level 8. I'm trying to rush towards this as quickly as I can. Uh, I won't have it ready by the time 2.1 comes out, but I'll be close. And another big one is the Electro Treasure Compass. By getting this, you will be able to unlock all of the chests in an area. Um, these are really handy for whenever you're going back through an area, trying to 100% it on the map. Uh, having one of these is a massive time saver. And of course, you will get the Electro Wings, which just look amazing on a bunch of characters. I apparently unlocked a mission somehow. Uh, look amazing on a bunch of characters, like Beto. And I really want them, so uh, I'm going to try and max this out as quickly as possible. But guys, that is it for Genshin Impact, Inazuma, the entire area, what you should be focusing on, what everything is and what it does. If I left anything out, let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, also let me know. I very much so enjoy reading your guys' comments, and I'll see you guys in another video. There Peace. Are leaves around.